happy here is Essie Cup, and I'm very excited to have her here with us today. She's one of our top two most requested campus speakers at the Claire Blue Blues Policy Institute. So if you're interested in bringing her to your campus, you can contact me. Just visit our website at cblpi.org. Please join me in welcoming Essie Cup to the, the podium. second panel we've shared and it's it's just an honor. I feel like, who invited me? Alyssa. I don't know what you're thinking. Such a classy event and now I'm here. Um, really, it's an honor, both of you and, and Congresswoman Bachman. I mean, I, I can't believe where I am. Uh, I was asked to talk about what drew me as a woman to the conservative movement and I always find that preface, as a woman, a little problematic. Um, and I've said this before, sometimes I'm asked by, you know, press or, or someone in the media what I think of an issue as a woman, and I usually say, I don't know, let me ask my uterus. <laughs> um, I like to think that the beauty of the conservative movement and conservative ideals is that they appeal to everyone. Um, women, men, the youth, the elderly, minorities, uh, gay, straight, religious, a-religious. I mean, if we have to dig for reasons why conservatism can work for various special interest groups, well then we might as well call ourselves liberals. For another, I'm not sure that being a woman necessarily informed my particular political experience. I didn't grow up in the era of angry feminism or identity politics. And luckily, I didn't grow up feeling like my gender held me back at all. So I didn't need to seek a political ideology that helped assuage any personal insecurities I had about my gender, or one that addressed anything that was lacking in my life as a woman. What drew me to conservatism, I think, was what draws a lot of people to conservatism, the belief that a limited and small government gives people the best chance at freedom happiness and economic opportunity. The belief that I should be able to keep most of what I work really hard to make. The belief that a strong national defense is the best offense. And a moral certitude that there is a serious and legitimate difference between right and wrong, and that those are not relative terms. that didn't come from any book or piece of scholarship or academic influence have only been reaffirmed over the course of my experiences within the conservative movement. I find conservatism is continually reasserting its relevance and its validity with every passing day. Contrast that with liberalism, which I think has to work very hard to assert its relevance, and often fails. And I think conservatism emerges as the more natural and experiential kind of life philosophy. Aristotle criticized the sophists, which would be today's liberals, for relying solely on theoretical and hypothetical data when determining the way that societies should operate. Conservatives, on the other hand, genuinely have a deep-seated curiosity in knowing what actually works. I think those lessons play out really well today. There are ideas that can be explored, certainly, but in the end, they have to work and they have to benefit society. Obama campaigning on closing Gitmo or universal health care or gay marriage may have been ideas that deserved some exploration, albeit a modicum of exploration. It turned out that a lot of his campaign promises were actually really hard to implement, totally impractical, or in fact dangerous to the health and general, general welfare of our larger society. I think that the best indication that liberalism is losing all of its relevance has nothing to do with who's in the White House, who wins elections, or who talks the loudest on television, but it's the fact that liberalism defines itself by what's happening at the moment, and not what happens always. If you talk to a liberal today and ask them why they're liberal, they might say gay marriage or abortion, 
These aren't things that classical liberalism ever had to deal with. They're issues that have emerged in modern history and liberals try to craft a new philosophy around them. Conservatives, on the other hand, might acknowledge that gay marriage and abortion are issues that they care deeply about. But they are conservatives because of larger life philosophies predicated on faith, morality, constitutionality, the family. Conservatism doesn't have to keep reinventing itself to explain its positions on evolving cause du jour. The explanations are inherent in conservatism, the same conservatism that existed 50 years ago. And that's appealing to me. And, and though we may adjust our message or seek new messengers, we don't have to adjust our principles, ever. And frankly, that means one less thing I have to do in the morning. <laughs> so I don't think you need high effort to Tocqueville or Barry Goldwater may he rest, to explain why you're a conservative. And that's the brilliance of it. Reading those explanations is helpful, sure. But I'm no more conservative today, having familiarized myself, myself with those texts, than I was at 10 years old, when I knew instinctively that my destiny should be my own, that self-reliance and individualism were good and important things, that compassion and a clear distinction between right and wrong or noble pursuits, and that men and women who fought and died for our country were the best heroes a girl could ask for. And I truly believe <laughs> and I truly believe that conservatism lies within all of us. Some of us just have the courage to stand against Hollywood, against cool against our professors, against our friends sometimes, against our elected officials, and say it out loud. It's not always easy, but nothing important ever is. So uh, I want to thank you again for having me. Huge oversight. I, I don't know what you all were thinking, but I appreciate the vote of confidence nonetheless. And uh, thanks for all of the work that you people do.